Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I'm excited to get going on this yellow block. A couple combinations of techniques here. Half square triangles make up um, the center portion. Four half square triangles put together make a pinwheel unit. And then we'll be um, accenting that with something called a flying geese, flying goose. Multiples of that are flying geese. So this is a combination block. Lots of fun. Get the download, Shabby Fabrics Free Download. You're looking for the Sawtooth Star with Pinwheel Block. It's the yellow block and you will need your standard sewing supplies, but we're also gonna be using a friction pen today. This is one of my favorite tools. I'm also gonna be showing you the option of adding a spinning mat to your um, sewing room, which I highly recommend. You're gonna see why I recommend that. I'm only going to encourage you toward notions and accessories to your sewing room that really have value. I'm not going to just try to sell you something for the sake of selling you something. I don't do business like that. It's not right with my who I am as a person. I want to sell you products that are truly valuable to you, make your, make your cutting environment safer, which you'll see with the spinning mat does that. Okay, so you've got your download that's telling you how to cut your white, light yellow, dark gold, and gold dot fabric. So I won't go through the litany of that, but the first thing that you'll do once you get your white, you'll have two um, four inch squares um, that you've cut and we have those here. We're gonna do something called a lot of kind of squaring up. That's gonna happen a lot in here. Now with half square triangle units, <clears throat> without going into too much detail for where your experience is in is right now we're going to make the half square triangle unit slightly bigger than we need to and square it up so it just locks in like a puzzle once we actually start sewing those four half square triangles together that make up the pinwheel unit so that is why we're going to have you make it slightly larger and then be able to square up so uh, it, i want to mention this if i haven't already already there are a lot of ways to do other techniques in sewing. There's other ways to make pinwheels. There's other ways to make flying geese blocks. This is just one approach that we'll be sharing with you and learn from your friends, listen to their ideas, and then decide which one you like best. So I always like to keep an open mind when it comes to learning anything. Um, so everything's ready to go. With our white fabric, we are going in our yellow. These are the two fabrics that are gonna make up our half square triangles that are gonna make up the center of that make center block, the pinwheel. Friction pen, I love these. They come in multiple colors. They're very affordable. They're a regular pen. I can just write on here. But what I love most about them is they disappear with heat. So one of the things that, let me just show you. If I don't like that, I iron it away and it's gone. It's absolutely wonderful. So how to work with, how to make half square triangles. The first thing is to simply trace from corner to corner. You're using one of your smaller rulers. You're going to put that ruler on one corner and to the opposite corner and you're simply drawing that line. All right, so once that's drawn, these fabrics will be, again, these are solid, so it's hard to identify what's the wrong side, what's the right side. These would be right sides together. Wrong side would be up, wrong side would be down there, okay? Let's do that. And then I like to just pin here and here. Now your instinct might be to sew on the drawn line and that in this instance is not correct. You will sew a quarter inch on either side of that line. Let's go do that together and you do not need to stop your stitching. I'll show you what I mean. So let's come on over here to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. In fact, let me show you what that's gonna look like. You're gonna come down here and you're gonna pivot and you're gonna go back down. I still want you to see me do it. How I make the pivot. So I'm always gonna start on the left side of the line and we're just gonna start. Now this can be a little bit tricky because notice how my black tape now is gone, right? The black tape isn't in play anymore. So I'm noticing where my black tape hits on this particular presser foot. And I can see it's kind of right at where that silver transitions into the plastic. So that's what I'm looking for right now. If I was really nervous about that, 
this is not on my on my list of things to talk about. If I was really nervous about where that was, I could come here, take my pins out, come here with my quarter inch line like this, right? And I can just draw where that place is. And then I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, did I get that in the right quarter inch? Again, that's nothing that I planned on doing, talking about today. Um, but that just kind of came, became apparent to me as I went up to the machine and realized my black tape kind of went out of view. So sometimes, you know, these types of things come up that we hadn't expected of like, uh oh, I can't see my black line anymore because I'm now sewing, sewing in a different place. So we'll be sewing on a, qu a quarter inch away from that. Now, Right now, the guide is kind of interfering a little bit because the guide is assuming we're always going to parallel it, right? We're not crossing over on top of it. We're just bumping up against it. It definitely will interfere with this. So in this instance, I'm taking note. I put my pressure foot down and I'm taking note. If I don't have my quarter inch seam allowance, if I haven't reminded you of this, just go get this because then you don't have to deal with this. I'm taking note of where that black tape hits and that's just inside the silver part of my pressure foot. So I'm going to take this away for now because it's going to interfere with what we want to do. Okay, so let's just put that aside for the moment. And we're going to now come on up and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side. When you get to the end, Sew off, lift up, turn. I pull that thread off to the side so it doesn't get jumbled up. And you'll simply sew a quarter of an inch back down your other side. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so you get the idea. I've got one done ahead of time. So we'll just go ahead and We'll just cut that one. You'll take your ruler and you are now going to cut on your drawn line and you will have two half square triangles. That's why to do the center pinwheel, I only needed to have one white square and one yellow because each yields two, okay? So I needed one to make the top row and I'll have another one to make the bottom row. Now we're gonna take this to our pressing mat and we're going to set our seam and let's press toward, let's press toward that light yellow. Set that seam. Now, careful, you, you can distort half square triangles pretty easily. So just be careful, be careful with handling, be careful with everything. All right, and the same thing here. Let's go ahead and set that seam. Finger press, here we go. Remember how I said we were gonna make the block or make the square a little bit bigger and then we're gonna square up. Now comes out the ruler here. And this is where this is gonna come into play. And you're gonna see, you're gonna see what I am referring to of why a spinning mat can sometimes be a really a really smart addition to your um, sewing room. So right now, this thing needs to be measuring three and a half inches. There is a 45 degree line here. We know we need this to be three and a half inches. So we're gonna slide this down until, I'm looking at two things right now. This 45 degree line is going right along my seam allowance and that three and a half is running along the edge of that fabric and it's off here, right? This tells me I'm in the right location to cut and cut. So this is what people would typically do, of course, is cut here, but here's the problem. This is just a bad idea. There's no other word for it. And I have done this and been, I should have never done that. And I'm, this is true confessions. 
So what a lot of times people do is then they adjust this, they move this. And now, like I've said before, when you start adjusting things, things are not as precise as they could be. So I'm gonna complete this now to cut the other two sides, I'm turning again. You know, I'm having to kind of realign, reacclimate myself with this ruler. Okay, what am I doing? Now I do want that ruler to be over all the way on the three and a half. You get the idea. There's a lot of adjusting, kind of fussing around that can minimize your accuracy in quilting. Let's do that cut there. And then I have another one to do down here. And again, I'm going for three and a half, three and a half now. And I'm gonna finish up that side. Okay, ready to go. Doable, yes. Time consuming, big time. Accurate as it could be, nope. It isn't. Introduce the spinning mat. This is like my new best friend. When I discovered this, I was thinking, I don't need that stuff. You're right, I don't. But if I want to save time, it's safer. I'm not doing this crazy cut or even tempted to do it. You're gonna see what I'm talking about here. Same thing. Laying the ruler, I'm looking for that 45. I don't want, even though I'm going for three and a half, I don't want to slide my ruler quite all the way to the three and a half because I want to be able to square up all four sides. If I slide that all the way over to the three and a half, I will only get one cut, two cut, and I will not have a chance to square up the fourth, third and fourth side, which I want. So I'm going to kind of scoot this up so I'm slightly off of my three and a half, and I'm going to rotate that. So I'm cutting, I'm cutting away from myself which is normal to me every single time. You see how this, I just spin it. There's none of this reacclimation, none of this adjusting. Now I turn my ruler 180 degrees. Now let me get those other ones. Now I am sitting this ruler on the 45, setting it into that corner nice so that I'm on the three and a half and I'm on the three and a half and I'm lined up. Push, rotate the spinning mat here. I can even let go if I want to. Press down. Faster, more accurate, safe. Those are words I love. Those are all great words. Um, again, it's a one-time purchase. I can't recommend the spinning mat enough. You have two half square triangles and I made two others ahead of time. So you would naturally want to go ahead and sew together the center portion of the quilt. Now lay out your um, pinwheel so that you're seeing the proper sight picture. I've definitely gotten turned around with pinwheels. So it's good to just verify. Is this what this looks like? Yes, that's what that looks like. As you would suspect, right sides together so a quarter of an inch, right sides together, so a quarter of an inch, and you can chain stitch that. So you're gonna stack those seams running our stack right up on top of each other. So it's very easy, it's very easy to pick this up and turn this a quarter and sew it wrong. So I sometimes, I'm gonna definitely double check myself because I've been sitting here talking at you. Make sure when you move those stacks to your sewing machine, you, there's no rotation, so you don't sew them on the wrong edge. Right sides together, right sides together. I'm gonna sew this one first. Let's go do it. You could pin or not pin. I'm always gonna encourage pinning, but just for speed right now, let's see if we can do this. My tape is gone, but I remember where that quarter inch is on this with this presser foot.
Now, typically, this is the first time that you will have ever pressed the seam open, most likely, at least during for this particular quilt. As you can see, there's a lot going on with the pinwheel, and we haven't even sewn these two sections together. For a pinwheel to sit as flat as it can, this is a good time to actually go ahead and press the seam open. So we're going to set that seam so it wants to just relax a little bit, and we're going to press that open with our fingers. Now I'm just going to go ahead and press from the back side. That's fine. I think I sewed a little bit of a larger than a quarter inch um, seam allowance on that. I really miss my my tape on there. I know that's larger than a quarter inch seam allowance. I can see that's larger than a quarter inch. If you're ever not sure, take your ruler to that, and I'm kind of just on the outside, but we're going to go with that right now, okay? Just for the sake of time. Set the seam, press seam open again. And here we go. Of course, I'm going to put this back out. Does this look right? Yes. Of course, we're going to pin here, right? Just like you would expect. And I might pin right through that open seam right there because that's the part that's so critical about a pinwheel. Pin here, pin there, and pin there. Sew your quarter inch seam allowance. Let's take this to the sewing machine. Somehow, like I told you every time, I forget my pin cushion. Pulling it at the very last second. There we go. And you can see how the machine had to work to get over that bump. That's a lot of fabric. Let's see how we did. Looks pretty good. And again, we're going to go ahead, set that seam, and we're going to press that open. That has been the best solution that I've ever come up with with pinwheels is kind of pressing these seams open so things lie a little bit flatter. There we go. So there's our center part of our block and we'll put that off to the side for now. Let's move on to the flying geese section. I guess it's a flying goose. Um, this part should be measuring six and a half inches. Now let's go ahead and go over to the flying geese unit. So with that, you're going to have, I'm going to lay this out so you're going to see this. Actually, let's put this over to the side. I want you to see this. It's going to help if you see both steps all at once. You have a square. You have two of the dark gold squares. They're pinned in the corners. Those measurements are on the download, so don't worry about that part. And we've drawn the line with our friction pen. We've done all that before. We did that just recently, right? Now we clip these intersections. We just take our scissors and we just clip them. And that's just, you can kind of see where that fabric, where the, 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 the tips cross we're simply going to cut so that you see how this one we've already sewn on the other side of the line. So you see how they meet each other in the middle. So make sure you don't overcut. All right. So you're just kind of snipping off those points. So then they, they butt up next to each other. You're just using your small scissors to do that. We've sewn on either side of the line just like we did before and now we will simply cut that. Now if that's, it's not critical necessarily that you go get your big ruler. Notice how my ruler isn't that long. It's no problem. I can just cut here and slide to the corner. So don't worry, you don't always have to go get your bigger ruler in instances like this. Now I have two halves. Let's put that up here. 
for our next step. This is where we are, right? We get another one of the gold. Let me show you what this is going to look like. I'll put those aside since we, we don't really need those. Let's work with, let's work with this one here. We already have that. Notice how we, we press those away. So you're going to take this to the pressing mat, set your seams. Press away. So that's what you've got here. I want you to be able to see it. Oh, we got a little something on there. Sometimes you might need to clean your iron. You just pick up stuff as time goes on. You have another one of your squares. You draw your line corner to corner. You're going to put it on here and you'll simply pin it. And so either side of the line, just like we're sewing, just like we're showing here. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. How nice you know what I'm talking about now. Pins are out and we're gonna once again cut that. Now, this is the coolest thing ever. Once again, we're gonna set the seam. Pressing away, you have a flying geese lock unit. And now you actually have two of them. You have a goose and now you have some geese. Maybe that's why they call it a flying geese because you really kind of get two in, when you use this approach to making a flying geese. Now, just like the pinwheel though, we made it oversized and now we're gonna square up. This is where this ruler performs. This is where I was sold on this ruler and that is why this ruler is in your kit and not a different brand of ruler. Now, watch me. This is, this ruler I swear was made for flying geese. This is called a delta, right? It's a point. If you're more comfortable calling it a point, fine. Let's turn the point so it's to the right. Take your creative grid ruler with the creative grid emblem facing you. Notice the quarter inch dash line. We're going to lie that. Notice this point. Can you believe how it sits perfectly? Your flying geese section, the polka dot section, sits perfectly inside that picture. And that dash line is running right at the tip of that. That's your first cut. Everything's lined up beautifully. Slide that over slightly. First cut. Now I want you to turn this 180 degrees to your left. The next step, this is all going to be available on the download, so no worries. We're going to slide that ruler over. Let's be using that side that's showing our half measurements. I like that. We know that we want to square this up to be three and a half. That's all part of your download. So I have slid this over now to be three and a half. And I'm going to make a cut. Now I'm going to turn this downward toward me. Now I'll bring my ruler. I'm looking for, I've got this intersection right here of polka dot and solid. I have my 45. I want to put this corner here and have that 45 degree line riding right along here. Oop. And really the truth is I don't need to line up on my mat. I'm lining up with my ruler right now. So I might even just make that cattywamba so you don't think that the mat is coming into play here. It just isn't. So I've got that coming into that corner. I want that ruler from that tip to that six and a half. This is being squared up three and a half by six and a half to be on the corner where that intersection is. And on this corner is the six and a half where that intersection is. And that line rides right along that 45 degree, just like it is. And I'm going to adjust that ever so slightly and I'm going to make a cut. Now I'm going to turn it again, 180 degrees. And now all I'm doing is with my six and a half inches. Notice how it's taking me to the very end here. Oh, I got to scoot that up now, don't I, to go all the way up. Your flying geese block is 
perfectly squared up. Obviously, it's a rectangle. Squaring up is more of a verb than it is, you know, it's, it's not a square. But this is the most accurate flying geese uh, uh, methodology I have ever used, and it's really because of the ruler. You're going to continue to do that, of course, and we've done that ahead with the other one, other three others. So now that you have your center put together, let's get our picture of our block in front of us. So we know that the points are going toward the center. Let's lay our block out, which I always recommend, of course. I want to make sure we're doing that. And we have our four corners. Here and here, here and here. Does that match the site picture that we are expecting? Yes. Just like before in the last block, you're going to sew the top row together the middle row together and the bottom row together. Just keep in mind that if the top row is pressing toward the center, which I recommend toward the gold, the middle row, row presses away and the bottom row presses toward the middle. So when you sew all three rows together, you have interlocking seams. This is one of the more complicated blocks. You're doing great. Um, if you uh, got the kit, your shabby shape is in there. The bumblebee, so cute, and the flower center for the orange, the orange um, flower there. Put those aside. You'll be using those for the bonus project at the end. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.